people began to do adoptive studies on heritability between biological and adoptive households, heritability of depression, heritability of alcoholism, heritability of criminality, and you can see heading off in all sorts of interesting directions from there. All sorts of interesting ones, and them always producing a number that would be higher in this cell of the matrix than that cell, and always producing the notion that one has just shown a strong genetic component to whatever that trait is. That trait IQ, that trait criminal behavior, that trait alcoholism. These were some very loaded studies in terms of the implications. So, what is the problem in that approach? A number of problems. The first one is that under the best of circumstances, best of circumstances, best of circumstances for people trying to publish papers out of this, under the cleanest of circumstances, the individuals in the study were adopted away, were taken from the biological parents a quarter of a second after being born no postnatal shared environment whatsoever. What one knows, of course, is that's not the case with adoption, and there's varying amounts of lag time before it occurs, and they were never able to factor that into the analyses. Okay, so environment, so you got two and a half days worth of environment with your biological parents at the beginning there. Okay, so that's a confound, give me a break though. Just a couple of days, that's gonna explain differences like these. What, of course, is also linking around, and there is the huge whopping topic of prenatal effects, prenatal environment shared with mom. And we're about to see in a little while some absolutely astonishing realms in which prenatal environment has very long-term effects. Okay, so that's a huge confound. So how could you control for that? You see a trait that an individual shares in common with a biological parent, despite being adopted away a second after birth, all of that, and thus you can infer there's a biological, there's a genetic component to this trait. Uh-oh, wait a second, shared environment with a mother, that may, that may explain some of the shared trait. How do you get by that then? The difference in the likelihood of sharing a biological trait, a trait with a biological mother, versus a biological father is the measure then of the prenatal effect. If a trait is shared 10% with a biological father and 17% with a biological mother, the 7% is attributable to prenatal effects. That was the general conclusion that the field made at that point for dealing with this irksome little problem, this pesky little thing of prenatal environment, which is going to come back big time in a few minutes, that was how they were distinguished. So, some more problems with that approach. One is one that absolutely tortures behavior geneticists the world over, one which makes them just want to like have people being inbred strains where they could keep them in cages and keep track of them. Track of them. The problem being that uh, often the uh, guy saying he's the father ain't actually the father. Oh, issues of paternity uncertainty, that sure screws up your genetic studies if you're trying to attribute stuff to someone who turns out not to be related. Very much higher rates than the people at Reader's Digest would have you believe. The rate at which the person claiming to be the father is not actually the biological father. Okay, that's a bummer. That makes things more complicated. One other big confound in the adoption approach. And this was something that was emphasized by a guy at Princeton, Leon Kamen, a psychologist there, doing a very good job of showing that adoptive family placements were non-random. When a child is adopted, you don't sit there and close your eyes and spin the globe and put your finger down at some place, and two minutes later, this kid born in like Shaker Heights is running around with some camel herders in Rajasthan. This is not done. It is not random placement. Instead, what is a policy in virtually every adoptive agency in this country is to try to match the kids as much as possible along a number of different domains. In other words, you are also sharing a lot of biology. 
with the adoptive parents. And that completely screws up the analyses. Adoption is non-random how it is done. One does not just spin the globe. And instead, there are very intentional attempts to try to match for certain traits, traits which have genetic influences on them. OK, so that's a big problem. So the adoptive approach had tons and tons of interesting findings, enormously influential. But over the years, people have realized more and more prenatal effects, paternity uncertainty, and from day one being pointed out that adoptive parents have higher than random rates of shared genes with the adoptees in most cases in this country. 